guys, Musty Hobbit here, and you ever have one of those times where you go into maybe the closet that you store some of your like overflow games and discover that you have put some things away that you hadn't shown anybody? Um, I had that happen. So a few months ago, uh, I managed to come across a Goodwill find um, for some Xbox titles, original Xbox, um, all at the low, low price of $1.88 a piece. Um, so I had to pick them up. Uh, thankfully, six of the seven are ones that I did not already have. Um, so, uh, but the, the seventh one, which I'll actually just show off first, uh, tends to run more than $1.88. So it was kind of a, not a horrible idea to pick it up. And uh, plus it's got a lot of great games on it. So let me show you these. Uh, we have Namco Museum. This is the double, um, so I have a non-Platinum Hits version of this currently. Uh, this has great arcade titles, Pac-Man, Pole Position, Galaga, Dig Dug, uh, Galaxian, um, quite a bit in there. Uh, this is an exclusive to the system, uh, and again, the rest of these are new to me. Uh, Blinks 2, the sequel to Blinks the Time Cat. Uh, give this a try one of these days. Next up is Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Uh, next up actually is, is, is a great uh, combination of racing titles. This is the Midway Arcade Treasures 3, and this has Hydro Thunder on it, which is one of the significant ones. Uh, San Francisco Rush, Super Off-Road, uh, San Francisco Rush, the Alcatraz Edition, Off-Road Thunder, Stun Racer, Race Driving, and Badlands. Some of those I'm not familiar with, but there's a couple um, big-time arcade titles there. Uh, another racing game, uh, we have Crash Nitro Kart. Uh, and again, another in a series that uh, a lot of people, myself included, absolutely adore, Burnout Revenge. I prefer Burnout 3 Takedown, but Burnout Revenge um, was came out after that and kind of evolved that even more. Um, granted, the Burnout series. We haven't had a good Burnout game in a long time. Uh, I heard rumors that Criterion, uh, who's the development company, was doing some kind of a combat golf game. Maybe not combat, but some kind of explosive uh, golf type game and that after that they were going to be doing something in Burnout if Burnout can ever get away from doing Paradise um, we shall see I'm hoping because I like that kind of arcadey racing game uh, sim simulation stuff is is good in the right setting but it's just it's not not there all the time um, and while we talk about non simulation games the last of that that closet discovery uh, was NHL Hits 2003. So this, if you know NFL Blitz, this is the hockey version of NFL Blitz. Uh, really kind of uh, lots of fighting. You can Your goalie can catch on fire. Uh, I assume there's you know, season modes and things like that, but it's, uh, yeah, it's in the early 2000s. There's a, there's a soccer one too called Red Card um, that kind of takes that same approach. So, uh, Actually happy to find some decent non, well, with the exception of that, non-sports uh, Xbox titles. The other thing I discovered um, actually came from a fellow Cartridge Club member. So uh, many of you know it's Rocket Sauce. Um, he uh, is, lives up in the Milwaukee area, and uh, when I was up there for my sister's wedding, I, I had, he had actually done a, a very small trade with me, and I. I totally forgot to address it, so uh, my apologies for for holding out on this. Um, but he had a, he had found a couple Xbox stuff, I think, at Goodwills in his area um, that were just ones that I thought would be nice to add, um, if only for being shelf pieces, which they may be, because um, I really don't tend to store things this way. So one of them is this uh, CD case. Um, or DVD case, if you will. Um, space for a few titles. Looks like, not sure what a zippered pocket would do on the inside. Um, and thankfully no surprises in here. Uh, but yeah, nice branding, nice embroidered here. Um, the other two things are actually the same thing. Uh, we're two sealed 
uh, Logitech headsets, wireless headsets for the Xbox. Um, and use for these is kind of diminished at this point. Uh, there are no servers on for, I think, any original Xbox games anymore. Uh, so using these to chat over Xbox Live, uh, the compatibility with only that primary controller doesn't do me any good now. I think there may be a couple games like NFL Head Coach that use the headset for gameplay, uh, but I'm not sure how much play I would get out of that. So um, the fact that I have two means I, I, I was contemplating opening one up, uh, but I again need to figure out where it would be useful before I do that. So uh, whether I hang on to both or not, we shall see having taken that into consideration. But again, um, Rocket Sauce, it's Rocket Sauce. I will link to uh, where you can find him uh, there. On the topic of, of him, uh, he and I, we've been talking about the CC100. If you follow the Cartridge Club or other people who are in the club, we've been talking for a few weeks now about this top 100 list that the club's been putting together. And if you've if you are subscribed to the Cartridge Bros channel, uh, the last 10 or so days, depending on when you see this, there has been a video each day highlighting each 10 games. So we started at 100 to 91, and then 90 to 81, so on and so forth. At the end of that, uh, it's Rocket Sauce, and I hosted a podcast uh, with fellow Cartridge Club members. Uh, we had uh, Duke from Retro Nonsense, we had Mighty Q Dog, and we had Pam from Cannot Be Tamed, and then uh, P1 himself. And so I would encourage you, first go watch those videos. The videos, the production value on it is great. We got voiceover from a number of club members. I would encourage you to go watch it. There's some interesting that ha interesting things that happen with the club list, especially toward the top that I think are worth talking about. And so that's what we did. On the podcast we sort of highlighted the list talked about observations um, some of the things that surprised us about the list and things like that so i will link to that podcast episode but i again i would encourage you go watch the videos first because the videos are well worth the time uh, may take you about two hours to get through them all they're all about 10 minutes long so um I definitely want to give P1 a lot of credit there. He put a lot of time into editing those uh, and, and cutting all that together. Yes, check that out. It was awesome. The last thing I want to show off were some thrift finds. I actually got an opportunity to go out uh, last Sunday and I, and I happened to, to find some things. Um, and it, you'll notice a trend this week. For stuff that I purchased, I'm gonna talk price. And I'm gonna talk price on these too because I think I got a pretty good deal. First up was this little bag. Um, my Goodwill always keeps the stuff that they think is important behind glass, but how they price it is a total crapshoot. Um, this bag has two Wiimotes, one nunchuck, and a Wii wheel. Try saying that three times fast. Uh, and the whole bag was $5.88. Uh, I have yet to test these. I have yet to open them up and look at the battery compartments, but even if one of these Wii modes doesn't work, it, it, I think that's that's a pretty decent price for for all of that. So that was pickup number one. Um, at a different uh, Goodwill, they have a. There used to be in the back of the store. There used to be this this smaller shop called Reboot, which was kind of where I think all of the electronics, computers, things like that used to be. And the last couple times I've gone there, that store is closed and they've sort of moved all of the inventory out onto the main floor. So I would always go there to get my ex uh, breakaway cables for the original Xbox. So they have bins full of cables. And so I, I started rifling through them and I found this one, which at first glance was, you know, it, it, it was an S-Video cable. So I was like, okay, I let me see what's on the other end. Uh, and then I found that it is a combo cable. Uh, it has the PS2 or PlayStation out here. I think this might be used on some early PS3s as well. I may be mistaken. Um, then it has the Nintendo Multi out. That's what I really wanted because I wanted to plug this into my Super Nintendo and 
up the quality a little bit. But then I wasn't sure about this cable and this end. Um, and it's a Dreamcast. So this S-Video cable has Nintendo PlayStation and Dreamcast on it, which I, I've never seen. I've never seen a Dreamcast cable like that. But functionally, I think it's going to be best used for my original PlayStation, maybe my PS2, uh, and and my uh, Super Nintendo. So um, pretty stoked to find that. I uh, again, and I paid two dollars and ninety nine cents for it, which is right about on the edge. I don't know that I would pay more for an input cable. Uh, but the fact that it is multi-use was definitely something that will work for a price like that. So uh, at that Goodwill uh, for $2.99, uh, I picked up a copy of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. Um, I have been discussing this game a lot recently, um, and so the fact that it had come up, uh, it was there. I, I, I couldn't pass it up. Good copy. Like, the manual looks untouched, which is fantastic. Um, it's in really good shape. So, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. I played 4 a lot when I was younger. Uh, that was the one you could unlock uh, Django Fett in that. It was right after Clone Wars had come out. Uh, in this one, as I understand, there's a ton of unlockable characters. Uh, the Doom Marine is one of them. Uh, Wolverine as well. Uh, Kelly Slater. Who actually surf he actually skates on a surfboard instead of an actual skate deck um, there's a bunch of other ones I can't remember them off the top of my head but um, I'm hoping trying to see if we can get get more people playing this um, for a particular reason one of these days so Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 uh, then at the other secondhand shop that I go to so I, I there's a couple goodwills and then there's this other secondhand shop that I I go to and they, it's basically consignment. So the longer the items are there, the more they start to get discounted. So after two months of an item being on the shelf, uh, it, it gets cut in half, 50% off. If it's been there a third month, they'll actually knock it down to 80% off, which is great when you have like Xbox titles that are five bucks normally. After two months, they become 250, or after three months, they become a dollar. And so you can really, really kind of, if you can wait it out, and if other people aren't as impatient, uh, you know, then and they don't snatch them up before that, you can at least uh, get some decent deals. So this one I picked up it is another Platinum Hits game. I got it for 250, normally five. Uh, and this is the Tom Clancy Classic Trilogy, which has Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell, and uh, Rainbow Six Three. Uh, and each of them has their own disc, their own Platinum Hits disc. But um, yeah, all three, all three games are here. Discs are great. Manuals in nice shape. It's a single manual for all three games, which is kind of cool. So and these are all highly rated games, ones that uh, a lot of people praise. Um, so. Good pickup. Uh, the last two games that I got are more, uh, slightly more modern. Uh, one is for 360. This one uh, had also been there for over two months. Normally priced at $10. They do their 360 games and their PS3 games at $10. Um, so I got this for five. Uh, and this is Un Injustice Gods Among Us, which is the, the DC fighting game made by the same company. Yeah, you don't need that. Uh, this is <laughs> made by the same company that does Mortal Kombat. So, uh, Never Realm Studios, I think, right? Yes. Yeah, they're the ones that, that did this. Um, I know the sequel's coming in May, so I... Uh, and I, I will throw a fighting game in from time to time, uh, especially if they have a decent single player, and I understand that this one might have that. Somebody told me that. In the last game... Um, I have gotten a copy of this a few, maybe a month or two ago. I don't have the means to play it yet, but I got another copy at a great price by comparison to what it goes for right now. And uh, I've been told uh, by a number of people that this game is eventually going to be one that is super sought after. So uh, maybe use this as trade bait at a convention or something like that, or if there's other club members who are really interested, but this is, um, 
3D.GameHeroes for the PS3. Uh, whenever I see this game, I, I, I get the impression that I'm probably going to pick it up. And when I get it for $10, when it goes for over $20, uh, that's a win in my book. Um, is actually in slightly better shape than the one that I had picked up before. Except, the, uh, for some reason, both of them have this little crease. I don't know if this is something that just happens with PS3 games because of the way the, the case is built or, or what. But, yeah, it's got a little bend there. But, um, yeah, this game is supposed to be wonderful. Uh, and one of these days, when I get a PS3... <laughs> I will prove that to myself. So, uh, anyways, I think I'm going to leave you guys there. Um, another pickup video in a row. I have more plans for a different variety of content. It's still coming. Um, I was going to do something based on based on the Switch, but the way that the um, YouTube audience is uh, flooded with Switch content right now, I just I just don't. I didn't want to get lost in the sea, so uh, I am planning something one of these days uh, that I uh, will unleash upon the world, and it should be it should be pretty it should be pretty interesting. I'm 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 looking forward to getting into that style. So enough teasing. I'm gonna leave you there. Uh, thank you for stopping by. I have been Musty. Take care of yourself and be good to each other. Bye.